Hey, my name is Richard, I'm a filmmaker from Germany and today we're going to take a look at The Hands of Pro. So what is Dehancer, you might ask? Dehancer Pro is a plugin that will emulate the look of analog film in your digital footage. The plugin works for pretty much every editing suite out there and they also have a plugin for editing pictures and even an own iOS app. But today, the one we're gonna focus on is the one for Premiere because that's the one that I've been using. And before we start, a little disclaimer. I have been sent the trial version for free to make this review, but I'm not paid to say anything at all, which is kind of a shame because honestly, I just have good things to say. So let's just do it like all the YouTubers do and dive right in. Like, you know, because we're diving in. So now we are in Premiere. What we have here is a timeline of just some shots I took throughout the years. Over that, I put some adjustment layers and on this adjustment layer, you can see Dehancer Pro. The first thing you'll notice is the first thing that I noticed as well. Um, it's big. They have a lot of settings, like a lot. And to be quite honest, the first time I was pretty overwhelmed by this. But Dehancer did something that's pretty simple, but pretty helpful. They have created this guide, which is easy to understand and helps you out because it explains pretty much every setting that's in the plugin. So let's say, for example, I want to know what print does like should i print the movie should i get a printer now and normally all these plugins they will just leave you confused and let it up to you to like figure it out but dehancer actually made this guide where i can just look for print and suddenly not only do they have an explanation for pretty much every single setting you will find in the plugin they also will give you some additional information about how analog film is usually processed and that's especially interesting because the hands is not just trying to be another plugin where you can just add some contrast and change some colors it's actually trying to replicate the different steps you would have to go through if you want to process analog film and it wants to replicate what these steps would actually do to your film and having a little bit more information in the guide is not only helpful in order to understand the plugin but also in getting the film look itself right with things like halation adding bloom you can really go into detail and dialing in a real and authentic film look or you can just go and get creative with the plugin, get your own style and do what you like most. And to be honest, that's the thing that I'm using the plugin for. And that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Because now we talked a lot and I think it's time to show you my workflow and how I include it in my work. So we're back in Premiere. I picked my hero frame, that's the one as you saw the whole time. And we're gonna create it from scratch now. I reset the whole plugin and the first thing I usually do is going to my input source and I choose a camera because the answer is giving you a couple of camera profiles to choose from if you want to. I shot this specific clip on a Sony Alpha 7 S Mark III and S Log. They even give you different base ISOs. ISOs? ISO. You can put this on and it instantly looks a bit better. So the first thing I'll do usually is do a little bit of correction, not too much, just to give it a little bit more context. And the next thing we'll do is go to film profile. And here we can select our film stock. As you can see, it's a huge variety of different classic film stocks that they included. What I really like to do is just going through them and seeing how different things will look, which is a lot of fun to be honest and like a creative discovery process every time. Another thing I like to do though is just trying to replicate the look of a film that I like. So I really liked Heute van Heutema's work on Spectre and if we look it up we can see 
they shot it on Kodak Vision 3 stock. Now we can go back into the answer and look for the Kodak Vision 3 stock. We have all of the variations right here and we can choose one of them. Now, this doesn't look particularly perfect right now. So the next thing I'm doing is looking for the film print. We have a couple of different profiles to choose from. Again, you can get creative with it or we can go back and do research, look for the stock that Spectre was shot on, which is Kodak Vision Color 2383. And of course, we will also find that in Dehancer. And all of a sudden, the image already looks quite a bit better. And the next thing I'll do normally is go in and start to work on the image a little bit more, do some adjustments a little bit, get some color in there, a little bit of a tint. Then we can go under Film Developer, which will give us a little bit of control over contrast. What I also like to use is Film Compression. Um, it doesn't have too much of an effect on this image, but if you're looking at this light right here, you will see that it's doing something. The next thing I like to do is going to the color head and enabling that and starting to play and playing with the colors a little bit. Of course, you can completely exaggerate it and make the whole image yellow, but um, that's not exactly what we want. We just want to give it a little touch, possibly. Well, it's a little bit much for something like that. And that's already looking pretty fine. Now you can add some effects. We have our film grain, we have halation that you can add, you can add bloom, you can add a vignette, film breathing, even a gate wave. You can also just turn on false color to see how your image will look in false color to check. Um, but you shouldn't leave that on, of course. The things that I like to use is the vignette. And most of the time I just leave it on a standard setting because that's working for me. And the other thing I like to use is the film grain, which is already on. Um, and again, I like to leave it on the standard settings, but you can really dial the grain in like you want it to be. You can change the values of the grain in your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights separately. I normally leave it on a standard settings. However, I will turn up the film resolution because analog film footage is not the sharpest most of the time. So you can organically replicate that with this slider. However, I like my footage to be quite sharp, so I'll leave it on 100. And that already gives us a look that I am pretty happy with. And if, for example, you say you've got a look that is good, but you're not really in love with it, right? It's super easy to just go back into the plugin and play around with your film stocks. You can just try different ones. And let's say, for example, I like the look of well, this a little bit more, but it's, of course, not contrast enough. Let's just add some contrast back in, give it a little bit more warmth. And suddenly we have a different look, something that looks different, but it's still film-like. And you can see how easy that was, right? And that is essentially why I love this plugin. It will give you something that looks super high quality, super film-like, something that would look better than any LUT. And it's still super easy to use. However, it will not limit you. You can do whatever you want with it. You can try to replicate real film as closely as possible, or you can just go creative with it. It's up to you. You have 100% control over it, and that just makes it a super versatile and fun to use plugin. And you can do a lot more with the plugin than what I just showed you. What I would recommend you is go over to Dehancer, download the trial version and test it out for free, play around with it and you'll see how it affects your footage. Honestly, I didn't think I would like Dehancer that much, but from now on it will live in my post-production workflow and I'll definitely use it for upcoming projects. So look out for those. That's it for this video. Hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye.